Hello and welcome back! Gauntlet of Greatness playoff time, always a good time. We've been playing no bandless modern this season. We had uh, four groups of four, 16 decks entered the fray, each of which was submitted by a viewer. These are the eight decks that survived the group stage. Uh, Splinter Twin, Breach Post, Dredge, and Stoneforge won their groups. Uh, the match we're about to play is Breach Post against Elves. So, top eight match, best two out of three, winner goes to the top four. So, this is the Breach Post deck. This is kind of playing in the same space as the Amulet Bloom deck that has been legal and modern up until just recently, right? Primeval Titan can get awesome lands out of your deck. The thing is, in no bandless modern, the lands are even better. Uh, let me show you guys Cloud Post which taps for one for every Locus you have on the battlefield. Glimmer Post is a Locus, also gives you some life gain in the deck. Vesuva gives you a couple more posts. It can just copy and count as one. So all those Cloud Posts just tap for crazy amounts of mana. It's actually also kind of playing in the same space as the Urzatron deck, but it's like if the Urzatron got together with Amulet Bloom and had a baby, only the baby was some super powerful supervillain. That's this deck. That's what you're looking at. Uh, Ancient Stirrings to look for stuff, Expedition Map to find the lands you need, you know, some value. You can also sometimes just, through the Breach, to get Primeval Titan into play quickly. Um, Emrakul and New Ulamog are both sitting up here as well, and there's an Eye of Ugin to go get them. So it's got all the inevitability of an Urzatron deck and all the power of a Summer Bloom deck. Crushed in the group stage, we'll see what happens. Uh, oh, by the way, given the matchup against Elves here, this uh, this Punishing Fire Grove of the Burn Willows combo, which is kind of an oh, by the way combo, but it's a little insane how powerful it is when your opponent is playing just a bunch of small creatures. <laughs> you know what? Here's the opponent. It's a bunch of small creatures. Punishing Fire kills every card in the deck except Crater Hoof Behemoth. But that said, this deck's also pretty powerful, right? Glimpse of Nature, Green Sun Zenith, uh, four copies of Skull Clamp. So you've got 34 creatures, uh, all, but, all but two of which, or I guess three of which, are cheap. Um, you really want to get Heritage Druid with Nettle Sentinel. There's the Nettle Sentinel. So that you can be playing Elves to both to create mana, throw in a Green Sun Zenith or a Skull Clamp, and those elves can turn into more cards to play more elves, to get more mana, get through your deck. It's usually a Crater Hoof Behemoth win when the deck goes off. Um, we'll see what happens. I, I actually think this is kind of an interesting and interactive matchup. I mean, both decks are doing broken, degenerate things. Uh, the elf deck is a little bit faster, but Shadow, your deck can kill stuff. Right. I feel like I have the ability to have answers, and I mean, I typically prefer question decks than answer decks, yeah. but I think I've got answers, and I can certainly win the long game, so I just have to just have to slow you down a little bit to get there. Yeah, I think that's right. All right. I am hosting a match. I'm going to mute you, and we can help chat more afterwards. Good luck. Good luck to you. All right, should be a fun one. See what happens. Lost the die roll. That's actually pretty bad for me. I mean, a lot of it depends on his draw, but yes. I think you forgot to mute yourself, Shadow. Of course, I muted myself. It's all fine. Um, I gotta keep this, right? I mean, I have a Skull Clamp and a couple of L's. I don't love having four lands, but the fact that I have a Skull Clamp makes me feel a little bit better about that. I don't know. It's not a great draw. Four lane, three spells. I mean, it doesn't, well, I mean, it has a Skull Clamp. That's the thing. I, I don't think I'm only getting this draw. I think it's below average. For it's a below average keeper for sure. But the skull clamp is just so good. Keeping. You know, obviously drawing lands will be bad, but drawing spells will be very good.
to the Ancient Stirrings for Expedition Map. A spell. Now he's got half a dozen ways to just kill my tournament elf. Lightning Bolt, I can totally live with. <laughs> Punishing Fire is bad news if that happens here. Not gonna lie. Punishing Fire is not good for us. Punishing Fire probably would have already happened. Oh, hey, Ors. Welcome to the chat. I did look at your article. I thought it was really good. Ors wrote a uh, beginner's sort of a primer on vintage. Certainly a format that's getting a lot of play on Magic Online. It's neat that Magic Online gives everybody who wants to play vintage a place to play. Sort of always a pickup game available, at least. So yeah, I liked your primer. It was good stuff. So he accelerates his mana. Fair enough. Death rate. All right. Am I just clamping for value because my hand's not very exciting? That's probably what's going on. I, mean, I do have a fetch land for death rate. So it's probably... Death right skull clamp eat the elf. How's that sound? That's about right. I don't think I want to try at Arbor yet, although that is certainly a thing that's probably going to happen. Well, it means well this guy commits suicide first. I can't imagine I'm going to get something I'm more interested in than this death rate, but... What scary thing is Expedition Map going to get? No Locust is in play yet, so he's not... Yeah, now there's a Cloud Post, so... This taps for one for each Locust on the battlefield. So if he plays a Locust next turn, it taps for two, and then on and on. It's often Primeval Titan since those things instantly into the stratosphere. Not the fastest start, I guess, for either of us. Green Sun Zenith. Wow. All right. How close are we to actually going off? He's shown no ability to kill my creatures. He might have six mana next turn. If he has Glimmer Post, which is, comes into play untapped. I only have four mana. And I have, so if I, if I Green Sun Zenith for Nettle Sentinel, and I play Heritage Druid, then I have the ability to tap three to Heritage Druid. I mean, I'm essentially relying on Skull Clamp to draw cards. I only have one creature that I can kill because I don't really want to kill the Heritage Druid, but it's pretty close. I can fetch a Dryad Arbor to Clamp, right? I can go Green Sun Zenith for Nettle Sentinel. I can tap this guy for mana for the Heritage Druid. Now I have three creatures, so I make three mana. I can fetch Dryad Arbor. So I can use one mana to eat Dryad Arbor. I can play Llanowar Elves. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to try to see how far I get. <sighs> sure. So, green sun zenith for... There's not a way to get an untap out of the Nettle Sentinel, I don't think. Oh, 
oh, I have to tap Deathrite Shaman for mana if I'm going to Catacombs for Dryad Arbor. So that doesn't quite work. I can't actually do that. Because Dryad Arbor's not an elf, is the thing. This has to be untapped elves. Dryad Arbor, I assume Dryad Arbor's not an elf. There's no way Dryad Arbor's an elf, right? Yeah, it's a Dryad, of course. Still, I still think this line's reasonable, especially since it sets up. It's not like I'm committing any resources that are irreplaceable. It's not like I'm using a glimpse or anything. Come on, Shadow. I don't care if your kid needs attention. I need you to hit F6 for me. Yeah, which I think means I just can't get the Dryad Arbor. I mean, I still get to go... I still get to play a Llanowar Elves. And a I still get to play Heritage Druid, make three mana, play a Llanowar Elves, eat a Llanowar Elves. Let's see how far I get. So I have Fetch for Dryad Arbor available next turn. Oh, it has to be Heritage Druid here. Yes, yes. Green mana. Lana. Death right, then make the mana, then eat it. Yes. Hit me. <laughs> Close. Not quite, but next turn could be a very exciting turn for us, is what I have concluded. No reason not to just play this death rate. Have it available as an attacker next turn. What is he gonna kill? I mean, I don't want to kill my heritage druid. It's just too good. Like those two cards are so unlikely to save me that I think I'd go for nettle sentinel or death rate. I mean, the thing is, if he wants to kill a death right, he's going to kill the one that's not wearing the skull clamp. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> okay. What you got? How much damage can you do? You have Vesuva. It's going to come into play tapped if you're making a cloud post. So one, two, three, four, that's only five mana. That's not prime time. How close is this crater up with him? How much how many of these dudes do I have to tap? I get a land. Ugh. Bye bye Heritage Druid, you were fun. Does not get to regrow it though, so I get to eat it with Deathrite Shaman. If I can't win the game. Glimpse. Okay. Catacombs can get a Dryad Arbor, which is two cards. I have no Heritage Druid. How much mana do I have? I can have tap two of these for mana. So one, two, three, four, five. I only have six mana, so Crater of Behemoth is not happening. Crater of Behemoth is not happening this turn. Glimpse is probably not happening this turn unless I get some lucky skull clamps. So I think I start by eating a Dryad Arbor and then see if my hand got enough better.
pretty good. Wow, it's kind of insane, actually. He's got nothing. He's got green and one. So I play Heritage. I play Glimpse. I play Heritage Druid. I make mana. I play Dwinan's Elite. I make mana. I probably get to Crater Hoof. It's kind of an insane skull clamp draw. Another glimpse. So I can go glimpse Dwinan's elite. That's gotta be good. Oh by the way. Oh interesting. So if I tap these guys for mana then I don't get to attack with them, which is probably not worth it. Right? Like, I get an untap out of the Nettle Sentinel, but I lose the ability both to eat the Punishing Fire and the ability to attack with these Death Rites. That doesn't sound worth it. I think I just played Dwinan's Elite. Because that's three mana. Two cards, a Skull Clamp. Yeah, I'm going to try to leave the Death Rites untapped. Sticks. We, we're gonna win. I mean, I really would like another Nettle Sentinel, but I can't imagine I'm gonna fail to find one, given how insane these things are going. Uh, tap one death right shaman for mana what do you think uh, I probably skull clamp first because like what I really want is a nettle sentinel eh. gonna run out of mana? I have enough I don't feel like I'm gonna run out of mana. I can't actually afford to say yes to those is the problem because I can deck myself. Heritage Druid, tapping all these. We found Green Sun Zenith. So, Green Sun, this is Green Spells, right? Yeah, so Green Sun Zenith does untap it. I just go get a Nettle Set now. Yes, yes. Green Sun Zenith for one. Now we start turning a profit on mana. Although again, I have to tap a death right if I want to do want something here, so I don't think I do. Uh, always yes, and always yield. There we go. Throw another Nelson. All right. Heritage Druid tapping all of these. Nettle Sentinel. <sighs> Drawing two cards, and we may as well go through the motions, right? Actually kill him. Let everybody see how the combo works. All three Nettle Sentinels. Kind of doesn't matter what I play at this point. We'll play Dwinan's Elite. Always 
Shield and always yes. Now that we have multiple Nettle Sentinels, every time we play a spell, not only are we drawing two cards to make sure we can keep going, um, but we're getting so many Nettle Sentinel on taps that we're pulling ahead on mana. So that is seven. I can just tap these. This Crater of Behemoth is... Substantially more than lethal. Everybody gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of creatures you control. And everybody gets trample. So that Dryad Arbor no longer matters. Still got 23 cards in our library, so no big deal. Crater Hoof. Raw smash. There you go. Wow, that elf deck feels a lot better with the changes we've made since the Swiss, not gonna lie. It just felt like a smooth combo engine. Now, sideboarding. He has he has some stuff we have to care about. He has things in his sideboard like Pyroclasm, which is just annoying. But uh, Chalice of the Void is a catastrophe if he gets to Chalice 1. So I already have a Reclamation Sage. I feel like I want an additional Reclamation Sage. I mean, think none of my cards are actively bad, and obviously I can get Rex Sage with Green Sun Zenith. Um, I mean, I think I just have to make sure I don't get demolished um, by Chalice in particular. I I would like some Thought Seizes, but I mean, what am I cutting? Like, I can maybe shave a two for a Thought Seize. Does that make sense? It's like I I, could, I don't really want multiple Skull Clamps. Except when I do, like sometimes you draw four cards off Deathrite Shaman and it's awesome. I don't know. I don't know that I can get into the Thoughtseize business. But I kind of want to be in the Thoughtseize business. Like, if I do that, just a couple of Thoughtseizes, but then it's just like, is it in my opening draw? Do I manage to blow them away? <sighs> yeah, the changes since the since the group stage, we're basically minus four Mental Misstep, plus four Elvish Mystic. We did a little more than that. There was like a clunky six mana, I forget the name of the guy. Not Warburigmos, but uh, the guy the guy who deals six damage whenever they play a non-creature spell. We took him out, and so that there's just like another random one drop. This is why I have a Jiraiya War Caller. I, don't, I have no idea if War Caller is correct, but it's what I have. Um, see, I don't... I don't think I want to be in the Thoughtseize business. I think I want to be in the business of making sure that when my combo comes together that I don't draw clunky stuff, right? Pyroclasm is going to be hard enough to beat. Yeah, I'm just going to bring in a Rex Age and submit it. Rurikthar, that's his name. Deck felt great, that game. I'm not going to lie. There is a Card Kingdom store credit on the line in this top eight, by the way. I've got a list of all the viewers that submitted all these decks that we're playing, and uh, if your deck made top eight, you want something. It's not much for, for like fifth through eighth. It's like 10 or $20 in store credit, I think. Um, but it adds up. It's like a box of Modern Masters for first place, for whoever built the first place deck. This hand looks great. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's... I would trade second skull clamp for a land, but whatever. I've got lots. Oh, it might actually be a turn one Dryad Arbor game. All right, I'm keeping. I mean, this draw is soft to Pyroclasm, but every draw my deck is capable of getting is soft to Pyroclasm, so same with Punishing Fire. Oh, a land, that's exciting. So do I actually play a creature on turn one? I can just get Dryad Arbor, which is food for Skull Clamp, and gives me two mana next turn. Gives me three mana next turn, where I can go Glimpse, Heritage, Sentinel for value. I 
I think I want Dryad Arbor. <sighs> so it begins. He's got two locuses. He could have six mana, six colorless next turn. He's got two colorless already this turn. Even though it both his lands are... Oh! Oh, and I just used my green sun zenith! Oh, and it... Ah. Wow. That counters every single card in my hand. Ugh. <laughs> no problem! Calculated. Totally calculated. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I actually, of course, need a fourth land, but bam, chalice, no problem. I wonder if I'm supposed to not play my hand optimally just to hold on to Green Sun Zenith as a way to get. I actually don't think so. Because, like, how is this hand getting to four mana without a Dryad Arbor? I'm not at four mana even with a Dryad Arbor. I don't regret my play. Really want to land though, not gonna lie. <laughs> That's funny. Do I get Dryad Arbor? Oh, that gets countered. I can't get Dryad Arbor. I can get Elvish Visionary and Dwine and Delete. Oh, no, I can get Land or Elf, right? I can just do it for two. Like, I can get a one drop by playing it. So I should get, like... There's no fetch lands in the graveyard. Do I just get a Nettle Sentinel? No, I should get Dorky Land or Elf. Because Pyroclasm, I'm going to be in trouble, but... His Pyroclasm, he probably is just gonna, he's gonna figure out to just kill Dryad Arbor. Like, he declines to kill Dryad Arbor last turn. <sighs> well, obviously, I'm in trouble. So I have to gamble a little bit. I think it's Zenith for Lanowar. I guess he doesn't have the he doesn't have the land yet. No Grove of the Burn Willows, so no recursion. Does have seven mana. Nine mana? What am I talking about? Oh prime time. What did he do? Did he just misclick? You misclicked. So I have nine mana sitting in my pool. <laughs> yeah, I see that. I'm like, why did Chalice trigger? Oh, you forgot to pick your X. Wow. Okay. Now what? I mean, prime time. Look, if if I draw land next turn, I beat prime time. What are you? You're just getting primeval titan, right? Just getting primeval titan, right? And I've got two primeval titans in my hand, so I'm just going to be casting primeval titans till the game's over. All right. Look, I'm willing to pretend you have a primeval titan here, but the thing. Well, actually, I've got I've got Emrakul in my hand, so like I get a cloud post and a glimmer post, and I cast Emrakul next turn. Okay. Um, you cast Emrakul next turn? You just do... Next turn. Yeah. Right, because I, cl I get a cloud post. Yeah. You sure you're holding Emrakul and not Ulamog? Uh, yeah, if you can see it, I'll show it to you. No, uh, that's... I, I believe you. I'm just that's fair. making sure you've actually read it. Yeah, yeah. Emrakul, 
can't be countered. I get an extra turn, and then you you lose. I do. Um, so I can top deck if I top deck a land. So I'm try to go off, right? Right. And if you can't go off, then I've got you beat. Yeah, agreed. All right. I basically can't go off, but that's fine. But you got to try. I, I'll try. <laughs> I mean, go off consists of draw a land. Yeah, I obviously don't want to win on a misclick. Yeah, I can't do anything. I mean, obviously, even if I did draw the land to Green Sun Zenith for the ability to blow up the Chalice, I'm out of mana and, like, yeah, Chalice. There was basically no way I could play that game to win it. I just couldn't beat Chalice with this draw. No matter what I do. Well, I can't beat Chalice plus what the hell. I mean, turn four Primeval Titan into turn five Emrakul. That was his draw, right? Turn two Chalice. Turn three? Wait. It's my fourth turn. Yeah, he had he missed a land drop. So it was turn two Chalice into turn four Primeval Titan into turn five Emrakul. Good game. On to game three. I mean, I could have Abrupt Decay, right? I can have more answers to Chalice in my deck. It's just, like, this Abrupt Decay does nothing except blow up a Chalice. I could have another Rex Age, which is a three mana way to beat Chalice. I am on the play this game, so I'm, more li I'm likely to get more mana in play before he can Chalice me. I can thought seize. It does blow up talisman. That to me is an argument for this reclamation sage. It's not like I need the can't be countered here part here. I'm gonna bring in a third rex sage. <laughs> it's funny. I feel like visionary should be better than Dwinan's elite, but I keep winding up in these games where I have heritage druid. And the fact that Dwinan's Elite makes two L's, it's like, I'm usually tight on mana, not cards. So I'm going to trim there. Yeah, see what happens. Game three. Yes, of course I would like to play first. So we have infinite mana and no action. Huh. I do have death right for punishing fire. Except he kills the death right first. And it draws all mana. Might be a mulligan. I thought about cutting the fourth skull clamp. Problem with cutting the fourth skull clamp is that it's insane to get the first one. And like, we actually played a practice match where I drew a bunch of mana creatures and it's just please draw a skull clamp. And I'm thinking about the fact that I sided out one skull clamp. Ugh. The lack of symbiote in the modern format is definitely contributing to the fact that Visionary isn't as amazing as it, as you remember it being back in the old extended format when Luis won Berlin with this deck. I think because of the Scry Mulligan I catch this in. It's one of those where it's borderline, but I'm a combo deck. I'm going to go fishing. This seems dramatically better. Yeah, way happier. This even beats Chalice. Oh, he's mulliganing too. Five, five. Get into these things. Oh, Nettle Sentinel. I want Nettle Sentinel, right? I'm going to go turn one Lanawar. And then I'm going to go like Elvish Vision. Yeah, I want it. I mean, I kind of want land too, but Nettle Sentinel is part of the go off and win package, so. Hey Charles, welcome everybody. Hope you're enjoying No Bandless Modern. I certainly am. 
Game three for a spot in the top four. Lightning Bolt is very annoying. I basically need to fade Lightning Bolt. Especially since I'm drawing Nettle Sentinel. I mean, I'm drawing Nettle Sentinel. I can play Nettle Sentinel, but... I want to play Elvish Visionary next turn. Oh, it looks like we did it. No Lightning Bolt. I certainly prefer a land here. It's a very, very slow land. Uh, you can see all the deck lists for these decks on the uh, Mox Boarding House website. If you go to moxboardinghouse.com, click on media, um, you'll see articles there that are associated with all the YouTube videos. You can also see the entire 10 weeks of regular season, 20 matches are all sitting on the Card Kingdom's uh, YouTube page as well. So thanks to Card Kingdom and Mox Boarding House for sponsoring us. They're basically sister stores. There's Card Kingdom and there's Mox Boarding House. Y'all. Land? Hmm. We have Rex Sage. Chalice is obviously a problem, so now we have to play for him to not have Pyroclasm. <laughs> is it greedy to get Heritage Druid? I think I'm supposed to get Heritage Druid, because like if it works, if Heritage Druid survives, then I have four mana next turn and I have my Heritage Druid Nettle Sentinel combo. I mean I could just get Lanor Elf, but like I'm not recovering from a Pyroclasm, so I just lose the Pyroclasm, I get to assume he doesn't have it. Because there's no way to beat it. If it's punishing fire then Heritage Druid is the same. It's no, it's no, it's not really different from Land War Elves. Yeah. Let's see how greedy we get to be. I guess this is slightly worse against... No, I was going to say it's slightly worse against Punishing Fire because he kills the Elves and this doesn't make mana, but like if I get Dwinin's Elite online... I can even, I can, I can cavern through the Chalice with Nettle Sentinel. Yeah, I like where we're at. <laughs> okay, that's annoying. I wish Cavern could make Skull Clamp untar uncounterable. That would be awesome. Alas, that doesn't work. So, that's annoying. I mean, I had to use my Green Sun Zenith to get mana, I believe. Yeah, I don't think I could play that any other way. I mean, I guess it turns out I would have top decked a land, but I mean, that's, I'm definitely an underdog to top deck land. I don't think I could save the second Green Sun Zenith for this, save the Green Sun Zenith to be able to blow up two chalices. So what, I just blow up the one? I mean, I can also play Dwinin's Elite. That becomes the only question. Am I playing Dwinin's Elite? I mean, he doesn't have Pyroclasm. He would have played Pyroclasm that turn instead of Chalice. So yeah, I play Rexage into Dwinin's Elite. I can even throw in the Nettle Sentinel through Chalice. Like I don't have a, I, I don't think, unless I top deck second Rexage or second Green Sun Zenith, 
I'm not going to get to use this glimpse of this skull clamp. So I think I just move in. Like, I move in and I have the back door outs of drawing a second Rex Age. So I can attack for two or I can play Dwinan's Elite and Metal Sentinel. Oh, I still get to attack for one even if I play Metal Sentinel. Still get to attack for two if I play Metal Sentinel. beating Chalice is kind of a big deal. I think I only have one cavern in my deck. I'm starting to think maybe I should have two. So Twine and the Elite's got to be better than attacking for one. Alright. What do we have? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have ten power. And he spent his time going Chalice Chalice. Which, I mean, it's the only reason he's alive, because that draw would have killed on that turn if it wasn't for Chalice. I think if it wasn't for second Chalice. Like, I, could, I would have killed that turn through one Chalice, I believe. Holy moly! That's a good magic card. Ha! Yeah, I mean, I hold back land or else, tag with everything else. I guess I'll do this pre-combat just to make sure he's not sitting on a lightning bolt or something. One, two, three, four, five, six, that's eight L's. Sometimes you're just playing a beatdown deck. I mean, yeah, you were at 19. How about, how about you be at two? Hold, hold. Wow, good game, sir. Those were very good game. Yeah, great game, that was fun. Yeah. Uh, you're hard to stop. <laughs> yeah, no, you're elf stop. in a good spot now, I think. This, this elf deck's just, this version of it's felt so much smoother. Like you just don't clog up on these irrelevant cards. And like and even as a beatdown, like just being able to go elf, elf, elf. I mean, look, it obviously helps a ton that I drew the cavern. Yes. Don't you? I think I have only have one, one, but I now think two? I should have two. Yeah, I should have two. I should tell. I'm gonna. Yeah. Just, in fact, here I'm putting in a second cavern because it's just cursed. I don't even know if it's gonna come up in the next round, but right. I don't care. It should have two caverns. Yeah, I mean, why not, right? What am I cutting? One of the four Guilt Leaf Palaces? Yeah, it's one of the four Guilt Leaf Palaces. I still want two Basic Forest. I think I... Yeah, I still want a Pendlehaven. I don't want to cut a Fetch Land, because I like the way the Fetch Lands can get the two Dryad Arbors. Yeah, I'm just putting in a second, cha second cavern. Whew! So Elves! Yeah, I mean, the reason not to have... I don't know what I'm playing. Is there any reason not to just have more caverns? What do they not cast? They don't cast Abrupt Decay out of the side. Well, they don't cast Thought Season Duress. I mean, they, they sure. cast Skull Clamp, so... Yeah, yeah they cast they cast nearly everything. Yeah, they just cast all the creatures, obviously. 
they're, they don't serve as the green for green sun zenith. Sure. Yeah, maybe I should have three or four. I mean, if you have that in that matchup, like, it might not even be good enough to bring in. No, it's still good enough to bring in. Yeah. Gotta stop glimpse and all that. But. The thing is, I did not bring in Thought Season Dress against you. I feel like just having caverns means I care so much less about the the chalice. I mean, look, I would have combo killed you on an earlier turn if it wasn't for chalice. I mean, chalice was good there. But if I'm not bringing in Thought Season Duress against you, who am I bringing them in against? It's fair. My, it's true. My opening hand is so good. I wish I had mana. Like, I had Pyroclasm, Lightning Bolt. I had all sorts of things to slow you down, and a Green Sun Zenith, and some... I had everything except, you know, those land things, which is why I had all the good cards. And then the second hand was mediocre, but I didn't want to go down to five. Yeah. Yeah, no, Pyroclasm destroys me in that game. Like, I just... Like, at, at the beginning of the game, I'm like, I just can't beat Pyroclasm, so I'll play assuming he doesn't have it. And then I became, <laughs> oh, he clearly doesn't have it, so now I can just shove even the rest of everything in and see if I can kill him. Yep. So yeah, I no, my only hope was to top deck one of my two Pyroclasms. Like, that. that's it. That's all I could do at that point. Yeah. Like, I didn't even think that it would it would be good enough to play the, um... I mean, you started with Cavern, right? Like, yeah. the, uh... Well, Breach Post is out. Both of those decks looked very good. Like, maybe Elves should have been a one seed. Like, if I was better playing and we started with a better deck list, maybe uh, maybe this matchup wouldn't have happened in the top eight. For sure. Breach Post might be one of the best. I don't know. I feel like we've seen three very good decks today and then Eggs, which is also very good. We've seen very good decks. <laughs> it's like it's the playoffs. I guess we should be expecting this. All four decks have looked good. It's true. They did. They did. Uh, they were good matches. Like, I enjoyed everything that happened today. I agree. Those were definitely fun matches.